Hi everyone, so I have this decimal sample activity where if I say what is 3 plus 3, it basically self-checks. If I say 6, you will see that there's a check mark that says that it's correct. This will show on the teacher dashboard. And if I submit it, it will say my answer is correct and tell me to move on to the next slide where I get the next question. However, if I get the incorrect answer, say I say it's five, you can see on the teacher dashboard, it will show an X. Um, if I submit it, it will say, sorry, please try again. And if I try to move on with the incorrect answer and just click next, it will tell me to go back and to correct my last slide. So this is what we're gonna do today. So let's get started. I'm starting off with a blank slate in my activity builder. And what I want to do is I want to maybe label this first slide question one. Um, and then I'm going to add some elements into this slide. So I'm going to have to put a unlabeled note. And I may want two unlabeled notes. And I also want to put a math input. So you can arrange this however you want. I may want to move this one up. And in this one, this is where my question is going to be. So for example, okay, that's my question. Um, and the second box is where my answer is going to be. So that's my math answer box. So I'm gonna label this input one because this is going to be for my question. It, so now we're go going to code this so that when students enter the correct answer, it will appear on the teacher dashboard that it's correct. So it will, a uh, check mark will appear. If it's incorrect, an X will appear. So how we do that is we're going to click on this here and this will take us to the computational layer. First what we're going to do is we're going to tell it what the correct answer is. So we would say correct equals in input one put a dot and the numeric value needs to equal nine. Okay and then we're next we're going to tell it what is correct. So correct colon is correct. Okay, so when we click done, we could check it to see if it works. I can click on the preview and I can say what's five plus four, nine. And you can see up here uh, on the teacher dashboard, it will show that it's correct with a check mark. If it's incorrect, if I say seven, it will show an X. Okay, so now that works. So next I'm going to have it self-correct for the student. So the student will know whether their answer is correct or incorrect. So how I'm gonna do that is on my label note at the bottom. Again, I'm going to click on the edit computational layer, this icon here, so that I can write a script. So in this case, we're, we want to outline some parameters. First, we're gonna outline the problem. So the problem is in input one. Okay, so this is what I'm going to reference. I'm gonna reference input one. So in this case, the answer I want for input one is nine. So I'm gonna put a nine there. Now I want student answer. So the student answer is in input one, they're going to answer it in input one, and it's going to be a numeric value. Okay, so these are my parameters. So now I'm gonna set it up so that it self-checks. Okay, so now I'm gonna uh, tell it how to self-check. So I'm gonna, this is my content. When my student, answer equals the answer 
and the problem is submitted, I'm going to have it say your answer dollar sign and it's going to reference what they answered. So I'm going to put a little bracket here. Student answer. Answer of is correct. And don't forget to put this in quotations. Okay, and, and that's when it, their answer is correct. And I can also say, move on to the next slide. But then when their answer is incorrect, so when all the student did was submit the problem, so problem dot submitted, but the answer was not correct or not the answer, I'm going to say, please try again. Um, so if they did not put an answer at all, we also want nothing to appear. So I would say otherwise blank. Okay, so I have when they have the correct answer, when they have the incorrect answer, and then when there is no answer, we want it to be blank. Okay, and I'm going to click done, and I'm going to test it out to see if it works. I'm going to click preview. What is 5 plus 4? If I say 8, it says please try again. Now if I say 9 and submit, it says your answer of 9 is correct. Move on to the next slide. So it works. So now what I'm going to do is program it so that if the student gets the wrong answer, they're unable to move on. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make a copy of this slide so that all my slides will be the same. So I'm just going to click Control C and then Control V. So now I have doubled my slide, so I didn't have I don't have to do all the that coding again. I would just change here. This would be question two, and maybe this is a different question. And then change here into my new answer is six. And again here, this will be six, and now this will be input two. And then I'm going to change this to input two. Okay, so now I have question two, and what I want to do is make it so that the student cannot move on to question two unless they have question one correct. So what I want to do is on my question two slide or my second slide, I'm going to go here to the teacher tips, and I'm going to click on this icon to edit the script for this question. So I'm going to click here. So now I'm going to do a function called cover text. So this is basically going to hide our slide. So I'm going to type cover text. Okay, and now I wanted to say when input one from my first slide, the numeric value for that equals the correct answer for that slide, which was nine. Oh, and I'm going to say when it is not, so when it does not equal this, then I'm going to put my parentheses, then it will say, please correct the last slide. Okay. Okay, if it is correct, 
if the last one was correct, I also want to say otherwise because then I don't want this text to show. So I'm going to say otherwise, again, nothing blank. And then I'm going to add this thing called a cover button label. This means if it is blank, they can move on to the next slide. So cover button label. So now I'm going to click done. OK, so now I'm going to test my whole thing to see if it works. OK, 5 plus 4 equals 9. You see on the teacher dashboard it works. OK, I'm going to move on to my next slide. It allows me to move on to my next slide. So what if I have the incorrect answer? If I have the incorrect answer, say I put 5, this puts an X. I'm going to click Submit says please try again, move on to the next, and then it tells me to please correct the last slide. So this is how you can make a self-checking activity on Desmos that will um, correct on the student and the teacher dashboard and then not allow students to move on to the next slide if they do not have the correct answer. And that's it. Thank you for watching.